Dumade, our certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. Here, each Monday of every week, we address important, relevant, and actionable topics of interest that will help you and your church grow healthier. And now, meet your host, Ni Dumade. Good morning, good morning. My name is Ni Dumade. I'm the founder and the CEO of Magnicraft Consulting. Uh, Magnicraft Consulting is a church consulting firm that helps local churches grow healthier through empirical assessment, trainings, and strategic blueprints. We've been starting this conversation on major issues church leaders need to address today major issues short leaders need to address today i want to welcome you to our youtube channel and our facebook uh, live broadcast show um it, uh, we do not take it lightly as we are hooking up with us thank you for hooking up with us we are so gl glad that you are part of this live broadcast show or maybe a replay of the broadcast um my name is Dwayne dumadi i'm the lead consultant founder and ceo magnicraft consulting and so I want to just go di dive into the last life. I'm a certified church consultant, by the way, with the Society for Church Consulting. And I'm also your host to the weekly Facebook Live broadcast show on Monday, 7 a.m. Nigerian time or West African time. Okay? Yeah, I'm also known as the church health guardian of the 21st century. A big thank you to every one of you who has been liking and posting and um, sharing our content. I want to be um, I want to thank you so much for giving us a comment, sharing us uh, on your platform, sharing us your church leaders and pastors, and telling us also how timely some of this broadcast content has been to you. We started on the two Mondays ago, uh, one moving, moving outward deliberately. You have to move outward deliberately from being inwardly focused. That's with the, with the uh, weapon of uh, community analysis community analysis okay how do you look at your environment to see how you can move from being inwardly focused to become outwardly focused then we, the last monday we looked at having a biblical and healthy church governance okay and i can tell you this can help your church towards a uh, health faster or this can help your church towards revitalization faster when you have the needed governance structure in your church then today we're going to look at rekindling the flame the flame of evangelism and discipleship that's the great commission and entirely okay the fire of evangelism and discipleship must not die in our churches okay it must not die with the increase in the changes in culture in social and uh, in, in, in socialism and, and, and in, in the economy as there's changes in, in, in uh, social changes and there are changes in, in the culture changes in the economy we need to make sure that 
the temperature of evangelism and the fire of discipleship does not die in our churches. Also, we need to also be very creative and intentional about evangelism because naturally, by default, the church does not just go on evangelism. We have to be creative, we have to be intentional, and we have to be deliberate about it. One of the things I'll say quickly is that about the church is that uh, someone gave me an interview short times uh, in, in Nigeria, and I, I made a statement in that interview, and somebody picked up that statement, and it's true. A, 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 the early church was a worshipping church, and today's church must also be a worshipping church. All the characteristics, all the church functions, and all the system that the early church had, the, today's church must have those descriptions in their church. And so a local church must be a worshipping church, a local church must be a fellowshipping church, a local church must be a discipling church, a local church must be an evangelizing church, a local church must be given to serving, a serving church, and then lastly, a praying church, okay? And so those six things must be balanced, but I can tell you that a church without evangelism and discipleship is biblically disobedient to God's instructions and the mandate he had in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, okay? And when the church is biblically disobedient, there's no how you can make maximum impact in the community. You cannot be healthy. You cannot revitalize. You cannot grow and you cannot make the impact in the community. Church is different today than what it is in centuries ago. Cultural Christianity is almost dead. You know those days on a Sunday, whether you make a flyer or announcement or not, people just have this holy day uh, attitude and then that, that makes them to go to church. And so cultural Christianity that propels people to co go to church has wind down. It is no longer a source of growth for any church today. You cannot sit down and expect that because you have built the auditorium, you have an open wide door, front door, people are going to flood into your church. You can build it and people will not even know that you are in the community. You can build it and people don't want to just come to the four walls of your church. So cultural Christianity is no longer a source of growth, okay, for any church today but see most growth in churches have at least i've consulted with a number of churches most growth in churches are from transfer growth okay that's why some make some uh, mega churches do their mega activities that they don't usually clash and so there's this movement a transfer of people from one crusade to another from one convention to another so most growth in some churches is from transfer and not conversion, and that's not healthy. And see, one of the things I will say quickly to any pastor who is a pastor of a local church, as people are coming to your church and you are noticing the growth is from transfer growth, you need to check it carefully, all right? Because transfer growth comes with these headaches. Know why they are leaving their former church. Are they leaving their former church because of indiscipline? Are they leaving their uh, former church because they are running away from some kind of um, um, discipline or whatever issue that may be? Find out why this transfers. There are some transfers that are okay, but there are some transfers that you have to send them back to where they're coming from so that they can stick to the discipline that or the discipleship process that they are running away from. Nine out of ten churches are not effectively evangelistic. Nine out of ten churches are not effectively um, evangelistic. There's a book I read by, from Tom Lera many years ago on evangelistic churches. If you have that book, go and get it. It's going to help you in the discourse I'm making today. So over 90% of churches are not effectively um, um, in terms of evangelism and discipleship. And so when the COVID-19 COVID came, because the evangelism and discipleship was having issues, there was that um, fear and panicking because of the pandemic. Churches need to be intentional about evangelism. Churches need to be deliberate about evangelism. Okay, Evangelism does not just come um, by accident. It has to be deliberate about. Okay, Evangelism does not come to many churches as a, 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 a way of life we have to deliberately make, uh, to develop the habit of doing that regularly. A church a growing is not necessarily, a church that is, a, a growing church is not necessarily an evangelistic church. That's the thing. And you, 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 the fact that you are seeing a church growing does not mean that that church is an evangelistic church. 
Okay? It is when you do, do the work of an evangelist, you do the work of evangelism, that you become an evangelistic church. Okay? So don't always feel that, um, and the, the, the bitter truth is that because the church is growing, people want to now um, begin to copy the tactics of those churches that are growing, and most of the time, those tactics are not evangelism and discipleship. And so every leader need to, every church leader need to address this major issue of evangelism and uh, discipleship. When a church moves from a community um, to another community, okay, we need to be very careful how we deal with such movements. Okay, I know my, my church has done that and I'm learning from that. Okay, when you move because of, sat of, of, of facility issues, as you are moving, right, take the, oh, take um, account of all the souls that have been worshipping with you that cannot move with you and try and allocate them to churches around the community because they cannot come or move with you to the new site. And that souls that you value souls and when you value souls, God will bring more souls to you. So advice for, for, for churches is what do you do with the souls? When you are moving away from a community and those souls cannot move to your new location, you need to find a way of getting them and planting them and establishing them in churches around the community so that they can grow in terms of their discipleship and also become, uh, begin to do evangelism in that community. From my in-depth uh, assessment, because I, um, from my experience of, uh, of in-depth assessment of churches, these two functions are most la lacking. They are, mo they are the most weakest, okay, if you go, permit me. They are, the most, they, they, are, they are lacking in our churches, and we need to make sure that we create the major system to focus on this evangelism and discipleship. Why? Because our world today has changed. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of all kinds of ups and downs in our churches, in our, in our world today. Um, there, there's a lot of volatility. Okay, people cannot um, um, bear up nonsense anymore. There's a lot of volatility. There's a lot of uncertainty in, the, in our world today. We don't know what the inflation will be. We can't predict the future anymore. There's a lot of uh, uh, following volatility. There's also a lot of uncertainty. Uncertainty is also filled up in the air. We don't know what will happen in 2023 in Nigeria. We don't know what will happen before the end of the year. But that uncertainty is so clear to us as church leaders that the, the, our world is getting complex. Our world is getting complex. And when God created the world, he created the world simple. But man has made the world complex. And we need to understand that our world has become complex. And we need to get our world back to be simple. To be simple. To get back our world to be simple. Then our, our world today is also filled with ambiguities. Because of COVID-19, the COVID-19, the pandemic has made a lot of a lot of shakings, a lot of fear, a lot of um, 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 how will I put it now? Checking the assumptions of all the theories and our the, the functions that we that hold that we hold so dear in, in the church. And then lastly, the Ukraine and uh, the Russian and Ukraine war is also raising the issues of food crisis food insecurity, and inflation in our economy. Now, one of the things I'll move away from there is that every leader of a church needs to address some of these issues so that people don't get so uh, afraid to go out in the community to do evangelism and discipleship. Now, one of the things why these two are also very weak is because it's a biblical and, it's a, it's a biblical and theological problem in our churches. And so, one of the things is that there is also no... Um, motivation there's no motivation and persuasion to share the gospel there's no there's no conviction to share the gospel in the community because they don't really believe that people need to hear the gospel like uh, to be saved and i can tell you that because of all the bad news in our world today there's no better time for the gospel, the good news to be relevant than what it is today. Now, our world is filled with all kinds of gross darkness. And I can tell you that no matter the little light that you have, is very relevant with what is happening today. So how can we begin to build up that conviction, that persuasion in our church members to make sure that they don't go uh, a day without sharing the gospel, sharing the good news to a friend, to a colleague, to a loved one, a family member, in their community. We must do all it takes 
We must do all it takes. I repeat, we must find all it takes to make sure that evangelism should not die in our churches. Evangelism should not die uh, in our churches around the world. We must find a way to fan the flame so that evangelism, we must also find a way of making it statutory. I know some churches who do it on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. We must make it like Sunday service. We must make it statutory so that people can begin to um, go out to reach out to their communities. One of the things that Jesus Christ said in John chapter 17 uh, was he was praying for the disciples and at large he was praying for the body of Christ. Because for you to be able to be effective in evangelism and discipleship, you, the, the church must not have uh, disunity. And so that's why um, um, Jesus Christ prayed for his disciples and the future church that they will all be one, even as he and his father is one in that's in John chapter 17, verse 15 to 17. And so what will make evangelism and discipleship very effective is when we are united. It doesn't it stop the church in a, in a district, in a community for coming to, to, for, to come together. 10, 12, 15 churches are coming together to do evangelism in the community. I mean, we are all doing this thing for the kingdom. We are all doing this thing for the body of Christ. So let's stop dividing ourselves, dividing our efforts, because when we bring all our effort together, we can actually make the deliberate uh, impact that, and get the deliberate uh, result that we have. You can't continue to do what is not bringing results and expecting that continue to doing that thing will bring a different result. I think that's near to madness and mental health uh, um, stress. So deliberately create an outward culture where you are looking beyond the four walls of the church okay looking beyond the four walls of the church who are in the community that we can get into the church also we also want to increase the budget to these two church functions that's evangelism and discipleship i know churches who are spending so much money on worship spending so much money on ministry on fellowship but the evangelism and discipleship is not being focused on. We need to especially focus on closing the back door of the church. Most churches are focusing more on spending money on the front door of the church. Well, I've also made it clear that we need to make it statutory and frequent. Okay, something that is in a cycle of maybe weekly or monthly or by uh, by monthly and things like that to make sure that the church calendar is actually um filled up with days in the year that the church will go out as one in united uh, 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 member of the body to the community to share the gospel. Then also, our church leaders must demand a high commitment for evangelism and discipleship from our leaders and members. It, I, I found out that churches who demand commitment for their members, they get something good and better than churches who don't demand commitment at all. And so we need to make sure that we get reports. How many souls have you saved this week, this month, this year? I mean, give us the names. We can let us verify the facts. Demand a high commitment from, for evangelism and discipleship activities from your leaders and members. Outward focus helps the church to also move away from contentions and, 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 and self-serving. One of the quotes I'm going to wrap up here with is the quote, um, I'm just going to give some quote that I had. This is for me. Sick churches do not grow. Only healthy ones do. Churches grow by bringing people through the front door and keeping them from going out through the back door. And that's one of the key things you can use to do that is evangelism and discipleship. Okay? No matter how wide your front door is, if left alone, never what closes the back door. No matter how wide your front door is, that um, um, act, act does not close the back door. Um, working on retention is a key to grow. And retention can be very, very effective when you put four things together. Your care, care, see that in my book is there. See that as caregiving, evangelism, discipleship, and assimilation. Now, one of my mentor and friend, very good friend of mine, I'm going to wrap up two of his quotes I saw in his Instagram page um, on, by, by, by Tom Rayner, Tom S. Rayner, fantastic church consultant, and I'm going to share, 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 share with you some discount it has for every of the Nigerian pastors who want to become a certified, trained and certified church consultant. He said, 
in his Instagram page. Say when church members are focused on reaching out, okay, and inviting, they are less focused on having things their way. Very fantastic. Okay, when church members are focused on reaching out, doing evangelism, doing discipleship, and inviting people, they are less focused on having things their way in their church. So all these worship wars, um, um, they want things their way, causing contention, self-serving, will begin to fade away because they are now thinking of the souls in the community and how to make community impact uh, eventually. Another, co uh, another quote from uh, Dr. Tom Rayner, he said, we often don't want to pray for our critics but it is what we are biblically commanded to do. So what are the things that the church is biblically commanded to do? Prayer, evangelism, discipleship, go out into the world to make disciples and to mature them. That is what uh, God has mandated the church. And the church must not be disobedient because for the church to be healthy and to make the impact in the world, this um, biblical mandate must be fulfilled. A growing, and a growing healthy church happens when disciples make disciples who also make disciples and everything starts from the kicks to start from evangelism i want to wrap it up here uh to 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 to, to finalize the issue of the major issues church leaders need to address today i can say quickly that um dr tom Rena has given us massive discount on Becoming a certified church consultant from the Church Consultation University. Okay, you want to be, you have some good experience. You have led um, um, the, the church in a good number of years. Um, your that experience with the training that will be offered uh, from Church Answers, um, Church um, Consultation University, it will help you become to help uh, other churches revitalize. How do you become a church consultant to help revitalize churches? Contact me. Some people have been contacting me. I'm giving them some details. They are massive, over 40% discounts. I can tell you that I've gone to the training and I can tell you those training is going to help your church massively and also help whatever church that we want to, you want to help in your locality. I can tell you that this is a new uh, most in the US, we have a lot of church consultants, but Nigeria, we don't have so many of the church consultants. And I want you to be able to get into this world of church consulting because it's way, way, way sweet. And helping churches become better is very, very good. Okay, uh, please go on our social media handles, like, like our Facebook page, go follow us on Instagram, twi um, on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and please. Do me that favor to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make a comment for, for us. Um, if, this, if you have any church-related question or inquiries, uh, let us know in all the social media handles. I respond to all my social media handles personally, and that's the fastest way you're going to get in touch with me. Perhaps you have any question, please let us know. Um, we also do trainings. We also do revitalization. We do church consulting, and we also do strategy planning for churches. Let us know this. My number on, on, on the screen. We can see. Let us see how we can help your church become better. Please, this video has been helpful to you. Uh, give us a like. Share us your community. Drop us a comment. You've learned from me. Let me learn from you. Drop us a comment. I want to hear from you. Uh, till I come your way next week, uh, Monday which is a new month with a new season topic for that month. I say bye-bye. I love what you're doing, pastors, and God bless you from the depth of my heart. Thank you. Church consultation? Wow, most definitely yes. Just as you should see your primary care physician once a year, you should have a church consultation once a year. Churches are organisms that change, age, they have health concerns, and in some cases, die. Church consultations help you stay strong and healthy. It helps you avoid the painful and unhealthy changes that occur over time. Church consultants know where to look, the question to ask, and will provide appropriate solutions for health issues. MagnaCraft Consulting 
helps you lead from your strengths, assist you in identifying and improving your weaknesses, examine all ministry areas for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, including potential threats, provide you with honest feedback, diagnosis, analysis, and actionable solutions. If you want to know more, call us and we'll sit down with you and bring out our ministry stethoscope. Check out our services at our website, www.magnocraftconsulting.com. Get the right and appropriate diagnosis, prescriptions, and services from a certified church consultant. Contact us now on 0802-324-2258. Email contact at magnacraftconsulting.com, magnacraftconsulting at gmail.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Magnacraft Limited. Magnacraft Consulting, doing church.